My son is Hunter. If you've ever met him, he is a very active little boy, wonderfully sweet. He's always been very lovable and loving and... He's just a boy. He likes to run outside and just be crazy. Like, we had a snowstorm. He liked to go outside and he wanted to go outside and play in the snow, build a snowman, go tubing. And he was signing it all to me and it was it was really great. He's full of life and full of energy. It's really great. They did the newborn screen three times. And he failed three times. And the nurse said to me, don't worry about it. Kids fail this all the time. It's all good. You'll go for the ABR and you won't have to worry. And you've got bigger things to worry about. He had a little bit of a heart murmur and some fluid on his kidneys. It was the least of my worries of all the things that were happening. So when we went back, I went alone to his ABR. Nicole, um... Your son has moderate to severe sensory neural hearing loss. And I just kind of was like, what? Wait a second. That's not what the nurse told me. You know, she said kids fail this all the time. She goes, no, you know, we did this test and it's telling us and that, you know, you have to, that he has, um, sorry, <laughs> that he's, you know, going to need some help. I was good when we left the office and then I sat in my car at Beverly Hospital and cried for a half hour. Because he was my first baby. I didn't know. I didn't, I, you know, I've never, I had, had didn't have any other kids. I didn't know what to do. Nobody in my family signed. Nobody in my family's deaf. No, I had no idea where to go. And she's like, okay, we'll hook you up with early intervention and all that stuff. And so it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. He first started the program. He was, he was pretty nonverbal. And ever since he's been like, opening the door, turning on the lights. It's just been night and day. Like every day he's, he's talking more, he's signing more. It really is just incredible to be able to communicate with him, tell us what he needs, and it's just, it's amazing. He teaches me every day too, <laughs> so that's really helpful. I needed him to come here, and I needed to make sure that he was someplace where I knew he was going to be with people who were going to give him what he needed and going to give him the attention he needed and be able to communicate with him in all the different ways that he needs to know how to communicate, not just verbally, but with ASL and teach him how to listen. And, you know, he needs to be around other people who are like him. He needs deaf peers. He needs deaf adult role models. Like, if he doesn't have that, how is he supposed to know how he's supposed to be? So it was, it was huge for us. I just have gotten so much out of it myself as, like, a support system and, like, having other people who are there it's been really, really important for me because there have been days where I've been not okay, like not okay at all, and woken up and said, is my kid ever going to be able to talk? Like, is he ever going to be able to talk? But he is, and he can, and, you know, and I just, it's just like so amazing to me what they've done for him and what they've done for my family and what they've done for all of us, like everybody who I know who's been through this school or even you talk about it and people are like, oh, it's such a good school. Those kids are amazing. And, you know, everybody is, the teachers are amazing. And it's just really, I can't, I can't put into words the, what the school has given us. It's just really amazing. Amazing. There's no words for it. And he's blossomed very <laughs> fast <laughs> into Hunter, the Hunter we all know. Nicole's siblings and my siblings and our grandparents and everyone was really coming together like I've never seen their family come together and my family and it was really really helpful and supportive you know that was probably one of the biggest things for us there is a frustration level that he had before that is I mean it happens once in a while now but over the past year um he's it's almost gone because he can he can talk to us or sign with us. And, you know, like I said, sometimes we don't understand. When he used to get frustrated and he'd cry and he'd sit with us and he'd just be really, like, look at you and be like, why don't you understand me? And I'm, you just can't. As a parent, like, there's nothing you can do on that level. Like, I mean, I'm not a speech therapist. I've done, you know, I used people thought I was a crazy person walking through the grocery store when he was three months old telling him six different kinds of rice. But I mean, that's just, it's just, he's, I can't even explain the progress he's made and how, I don't know.
don't even know. I don't even, I don't even have words for it because they're so amazing. And, you know, he works with Gina and Al and Danny and everybody, and they're all so good to him. And you see it when he, when I pick him up, you see his face lights up when he sees me, but he makes sure he says bye to everybody and, you know, hugs everybody. He hugs the school when he leaves. <laughs> he gives the school a hug. It's kind of like, okay, I don't know where that came from, but, but he just, he's, back to himself like when he was a baby and he couldn't communicate it didn't really matter and then there was a couple years where he was just really not okay and he'd get angry and be really just just a frustration level that you couldn't I couldn't help him with I want him to just be the best that he can be and you know whatever that means for him if he can give a hundred percent of himself to whatever he does and love it and be, you know, a normal, not normal, normal is not a nice word, be a, a fully functioning um, adult and be able to do things on his own 100%. That's all that I want for him. I just want him to be able to grow up and have people look at him like anybody else.